Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matt, I am the American Indian Gamer, and today I want to talk about Black Ops 2, more specifically the new DLC-only weapon that they're adding to the game. Now, this is the first time that Call of Duty has ever added a DLC-only weapon to the multiplayer, and a lot of people have mixed feelings about this, and my initial reaction was that this is a very bad decision, and I'll, I'll tell you why. But first, if you're unfamiliar, here is the weapon that they're adding. It's called the Peacekeeper, ironically. And here's a quote from developer Anthony Flame about the weapon. The Peacekeeper is a submachine gun assault rifle hybrid. It has the lightweight design of an SMG, but with better range and accuracy at the cost of close quarters firepower. It's a great weapon for objective modes like Hardpoint, where you need to quickly get into position and cover objectives from a safe distance. Now, I don't know exactly how this weapon will factor into the balance of Call of Duty, well, <laughs> what little of it there is, but I mean, let's face it, balance isn't exactly a primary goal of the Call of Duty franchise. But even though the game is unbalanced, one thing Call of Duty has always done well is that every player has access to every piece of equipment. Yes, you have to unlock it, but it's there and it's an option for you eventually. Now, you can still pick up the weapon. You can use it if you find it. If you kill somebody that drops it, you can use it. But you can only make it part of a loadout by buying the DLC. And I don't agree with that decision. I essentially see it as a carrot on a stick that they can dangle in front of players to make their DLC a little more tempting. And not for the hardcore players who are going to buy it no matter what, and not for the people who never buy DLC, but really for the people who are on the fence. They hang the bait in front of you, and you can pick it you can pick up the weapon, so that's like they they let you get a taste of the bait, and all they want is for you to bite and to buy the DLC. And I see that as a cheap shot. And maybe it's unintentional. Maybe they think they're doing a good thing. But in my eyes, that doesn't change what it is. The worst possible outcome I see of this is a success. Where the majority of the market proves that they're willing to pay for a new weapon in the mainstream AAA titles. And a lot of people only play Call of Duty these days. A lot of them really aren't connected to the gaming market, and I suspect a lot of them will think, oh, cool, a new weapon. You know, they won't really think much beyond that, which I honestly don't blame them. A lot of people watch movies, but they don't think much into the film industry, you know, etc., etc., etc. I'm not blaming them, don't get me wrong on that. That's just how it is. But if this proves to be a success and it proves that people are willing to pay for their games in this manner, the idea of buy the DLC or be left behind, what does that mean to the future of multiplayer gaming? And I'm not really talking about video game DLC in general. DLC is a great thing. I love it. It lets developers add to a game more efficiently than expansion packs ever could. And I'm not talking about cosmetic DLC like League of Legends skins or, or uh, hats in TF2. I'm talking specifically about items that you must purchase that are usable in-game. Weapons, buffs, perks, whatever. Anything that is an actual part of the metagame. What happens when the next big shooter, the next Call of Duty, the next Battlefield come out and they begin adding weapons to DLC? Then it's a buy the gun or get left behind kind of thing. What if they did this with a perk or a kill streak? What would you think then? What if people who are subscribed to Call of Duty Elite really become the elite because they get access to equipment that you don't have without shelling out another $15? Would you really support that kind of business practice? I... I don't. I don't support it at all. And that's why I'm no longer purchasing anything from the Call of Duty franchise until they come to their senses, if they do at all. Now, I've been a firm supporter of the series. I've played every single Call of Duty since the first one. The very first one. Not COD 4. The first one. And I put more hours into the first Black Ops than almost any game that I own. But it just seems with every release, something happens to just push me a little farther away. Removing dedicated servers, poor support, exploits, hackers, and just so many unkept promises, and just so many things going wrong. I'm just, I guess I'm just done. I can't really take it anymore. Not while they continue down this road. But I also want to know what you think. 
I know most of you are Halo players, but a lot of us play more than one game, and a lot of us have probably played Call of Duty at one point. I want your opinions outside of the whole LOL Call of Duty realm. Do you think I'm overreacting? Do you think I'm wrong? Am I right? Let me know. I'm genuinely interested in hearing it. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. My name is Matt, and I will see you next time.